wow, this is it, where it all began for my family. It used to be our playground, Alaska building. It all happens in here. This here used to be the back of the club. The only way we knew, the only way we knew, because it was the only way we knew, you graft, you put your work in. It's crazy when you look at that building, Alaska, how big it is. And like I said, this is so tiny. I had so many cousins that used to work in here as well. I had like a four or five cousins used to come in. Uncle used to try and chain them up, train them up. They never stuck to mechanics. They still carried on doing what they were doing. Like I come up here, Grange Road, busier. So you can see how it was a little bit locked away and we had our own little private road. That's what we had, a private road. Our garden, bacon growth. As I come here now, I can hear the hustle and the bustle. I can hear the noise. Motors pulling up, running in for their bacon sandwich. Look, you can hear it. You can probably hear it on the mic as it's getting louder. How many times I must have stood on this corner as a kid. Brings back big memories, big memories. This corner plays a big part. I remember my dad, he must have done like, a, there must have been like little shifts and bits and pieces. And my dad used to finish and always at the end he'd be here and looking out, waving at the bus. Whee! Me as a little boy here. I mean, I actually sit here now and I remember me as a little kid sitting here. Oh, we used to do a penny for a guy. First time I ever got involved with money. <laughs> it was a great little earner as well. I must have picked up at least 30p. Every client that would come in. Oh, mate, penny for the guy, mate, penny for the guy. They'd throw in a penny and I'd make this guy up all my mum's old clothes. I remember the head used to be like a Kermit head. I didn't want to burn it. I was making money. Door would open, the smell would come out. Oh, mate, phenomenal. I sit here and I'm like, where's the time gone? Seems like a different, complete different life. So I look across the road and you've got like spa gardens. I don't think it was called spa gardens, I think it was called spa park. We used to go there on Sundays. My mum used to take us over. Whee! My mum used to take us over for a day out, muck about in the sand pit. Wow. Further down is the blue. That's going towards Jamaica roadsides. And if you go look down there, that's down to Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge Road. Literally, the shard is just behind this building here a monstrophagus of a building. I mean, as a kid, no one built any tall buildings here. Down this road here, Spa Road. We used to have our Salvation Army. It was an amazing place. The reason why it was amazing, because it was like our little Toys R Us. I remember our mum used to take us up there and used to buy us like clothes. Never used to fit us. You'll be seeing these images on this, on this video. And you're going to be looking at it thinking, God, he's, this family is like a riffraff family. But it was the only way we knew. You know, that's why it's so important, this book. You know, I mean, the Salvation Army go down there, muck about with the toys, all broken, bring them back, try and repair them. I mean, the place is buzzing up here now, but it seemed busier back then. I'm not going to lie. I mean, everyone's healthy. They're on their bikes, riding around, jogging. You know, it's... Classy little dogs around, pocket dogs, handbag dogs. You know, people jogging. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like you can see, it's multicultural. I mean, back then, it was not like that here. And that's why it's great. I mean, people... Now, I can see why people want to move here. I mean, like, you've got, like, posh coffee shops opened up here. 
I'm going to take you down here. And the reason I want to take you down here, because in the book, there's a great, ep uh, great chapter. And the chapter itself, it was a big change, it was a big turning point in my life because there's a, in the chapter itself, is that there's, there's a part in it where I couldn't deal with it no more. I'm not going to tell you what I couldn't deal with. It's down to you to read the book. And that's why it's important for me to bring you here. And that's so you can feel the true essence of when you read this book. You know exactly when you read it, what I'm telling you about. You can visualize it, you can feel it. The way the road looks. And you gotta remember as well, the book itself is not only about Bermondsey, the book itself, it goes far apart. It goes up into Deptford, into Catford, Lewisham, Peckham. It's got all these little places involved, but I've got to bring you to the beginning because if you can't feel it from the root, how can you progress in this book? But I want to take you down here. I want to take you down here and I want to show you the front of my skull. So that was the back. All right, so should we go down? <laughs> so look, this is all new to me to walk down here. I mean, this place here as well, there's a place, there's a, in, in the book, there's a character called Khan. I'm not going to give you his true name. The people that know him will know. I'm not that like that to give people's name, but this was his building and dad himself. This is the front of the bar, the club at the beginning, at the back of the place. So they had a spill going on at the back. Go on, go round, go round, it's fine. Sorry guys. That's all right. So at the back of the here, dad used to have this place as well when he used to rent it out. And this was a business, quite a few different businesses here. This used to be moonlighting, it used to be a grocery, and my cousins used to be here as well. So you can see this area here, it was a family place. My nan used to live down the road. Literally, I used, I used to walk her home every day. My cousins used to live down here, going towards the blue. My uncles, my aunties, you can see, like, my uncle had the garage round the back. Dad used to have the cafe on the corner. Nan up here, cousins. We had family further up in Tower Bridge. Family down in, in the blue. But this episode is a phenomenal epi not episode, chapter, all right? I make it sound like it's a film. It feels like a film to me. And I remember that day. It was a morning. I was only young. And my dad would be walking me down like this. Not a word said it was that morning, I remember. All this here used to be more buildings. We used to have another building here. It was Mr. Patel's. And the old man used to shop. And in that shop, my old man used to send me down to get newspapers, the sun, the mirror, the Daily Mail. No financial times back then, mate. No one was interested. They didn't give a shit. Pick it up, run back. I used to look at the papers, page three. Hey, tip her tits. <laughs> Man, I remember that chapter though. The old man, he'd be walking me down like this. So this is the front of the school. So I showed you the back. That morning was a, a crazy morning because I weren't having it no more. I put up with the shit for too fucking long. He walked down like this. And I felt like this is gonna be an end of an issue that I've had for quite a while. Remember when I say about racism and difference? I was feeling it and I was feeling it in a big way. There's these gates here, they are here. And when we used to come to school here in the morning, these gates here used to be wide open. And all these gates, as these, these gates were wide open, all the kids used to come running in. But that morning, I remember, the old man, he let me off like a pit bull. And he stood here like that. And he let me go in. And I weren't having it no more. I'm not going to get too deep into detail because I need you to read that book. 
So when you read it, you know what corner it was on. And there's another gate here, smaller gate, because I want to show you what the place looks like. I remember that morning, it was raining. It just stopped, but the pay, the, come look at this inside of here. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So as I look here, and I look in that playground, it was an end of an issue that I had for quite a while. And I weren't dealing with it no more. And these three fuckers that were playing with me, and I weren't having it no more, mate. Bullying, whatever it may be. I mean, I look in that playground now and I, and I picture all these children playing around. Seems like a different world. I mean, I'm 47 now and I was only a kid then. I remember what I'd done, what I did. I remember what I'd done, what I did. And yeah, I remember the old man. He must have seen what I'd done and thought, go on son, well done. And he was standing on his corner. And what I'd done, I'm not gonna tell ya, all right? But he stood here. He stood here and he watched in. And I'd done what I did and he winked at me. He went, and he walked off, just like that. And that again, was a phenomenal chapter that changed me. It made me realise in life, you can't put up with no shit. Don't allow an issue to carry on. You need to nip it in the butt, ASAP. Because it'll carry on, it'll get bigger, become a problem. I mean, that day, my dad must have walked back down here like, yeah, that's sorted, that's dealt with. That's not going to happen again, no way. And it never did. It never happened all through my life. I weren't putting up with it, no matter what school I went to, what job I had or whatever, it never happened again. I mean, down here we used to have the number one bus come. I mean, my brain's flicking, it's flicking. It's going from thing to thing and memory to memory. We used to have the number one bus come down here, the route master. Diesel smoke chugging out the back of it. Stunk, absolutely stunk. I mean, the roads look lovely today, even though there's leaves and all that, but used to go all the way from Lewisham, all the way down to Trafalgar Square. I remember as a kid, used to jump in on it. I used to stay on it. We used to go all the way up to Trafalgar Square, sit in Trafalgar Square for about 10 minutes then make its way back. And I used to get off of that, that bus stop right there. Spa Road bus stop. Absolutely beautiful, mate. It like just about I mean, just look at it, it's just lovely. The park brings back so many memories, so many memories. Any, any, any time my mum would take us up there, we used to muck about in there. We used to have a little sand pit there. We used to be full of dog shit. But we didn't give a shit. But Bermsey itself is, a, is an amazing place. I mean, a lot of people don't realise how much Bermsey's got history here. Um, it's quite a lot of history goes on in Bermondsey here. Um, I mean, it's the, the Bermondsey itself. I mean, right now when I look at it, there's so many flats and bits and pieces like that. It's all residential. But back then it was a commercial area. A big commercial area, I mean, people were always working here. Busy, very busy, always hungry, hungry. And now you've just got all these amazing luxury flats. I mean, not the ones behind me, but all the ones that are surrounding are like, I mean, God knows how much these are worth. The place has changed a lot, it's changed a lot. 
I mean, I've gone back to my school. That seems surreal, really, deep down, just looking in that, in that playground. I don't remember inside the actual school, but I'll always remember that playground. How many times when I look up here, my mum must have walked across this road, my nan. Family, just family. Number one, it's the bus. I can't really remember what this used to be, this shop here. I can't remember. But 78, 78 Grange Road, 77 Grange Road is where it all begun for us, the family, you know? It was important. You all right? That's how it used to be back in the day. <laughs> uh, but as I sit here, I can hear it. The ass on the bustle of this shop. All the community in here. It's phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. Oh, I feel like... I feel like Bermsey, mate. Bermsey is where it all began. So as I look around now, like I, I never mentioned in the book, but it's important for me to mention it, but it's just caught me eye. It's all these memories are coming back, you know? As you look over into the corner there, you got four, you got four shops and a big massive warehouse round the back. Well, mum and dad, they done pretty well in this shop, you know? At such a young age, they really made money, you know what I mean? And successful. And the thing was, you know, uh, my mum was my dad's backbone. I mean, without my mum, my dad would have been nothing, you know? And still to me, my mum still to the day holds it all together, 73 years old. My mum, my dad and my uncles ended up purchasing that block. You can see the shard in the back of it. Look, if you look at the top, you can see the shard. So the positioning of Bermans, this Bermansy is phenomenal. So close, SC1. Well, they made quite a bit of money and they wanted to expand. You are right, pal? They made quite a bit of money. And uncle himself, he went from a small garage like that and he wanted a bigger garage. So he ended up, getting the back of it, which is a huge unit. He had a huge unit. You could have filled at least 10 cars in there. But two of these shops here, the ones with the orange on top, was owned by one of my uncles. And the other two beside it were owned by my dad. So things were building up. They were doing well. You know, they ended up having a nice up in Catford. But this is where it all goes wrong, doesn't it? Like I explain in the book, I'm not going to go into details. I had my issues growing up. We all have our own issues. My dad had his issues, which were drinking. And when you drink, it can make your brain make silly decisions. And he tried to get too big for his boots, didn't he, when it came to these sort of things. And drinking, I think, got to him. And he made a silly decision and he ended up losing them. He lost the business. He lost the businesses, he lost the property, and he was back to square square one. And I can imagine my mum how she must have felt, like, what's happened, what's going on? So as much, you know, it's, I can feel sadness here as well. You know, I feel, you know, my uncles, they carried on there, they didn't lose it. They ended up doing really well, I mean, they done really well out of it. And no, mum and, mum and dad, they could have done the same. But life is life, there's nothing you can do. It's just what happens. We all make mistakes, no? You're all gonna make mistakes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, Bermondsey was really big for us, really, really big. You know, even though we've moved away now and I think about, you know, when we came out of the area, you know, remember we was born here, my brother, my sister was born here, and I think to myself, like, what would mum and dad think now if they come back? How would they feel? 
they, my mum would probably ball. I mean, this is a big part of my mum. And I know when we lost, we lost our property in Bermsey, my mum lost a big part of her. But she grafted, as well as bringing three kids up, couldn't speak much English. It was hard, really, really hard. who you become with your surroundings. And even though I sit here and I talk about how the place was great, it really did have dark memories as well. I mean, it's my dad's not here no more. And I think to myself, if dad was here, how would he feel about it? Because once I'm gone, it's all gone. I mean, the Grange used to be a toy factory. Everyone's got brand new motors back there and everyone used to nick the fucking motors. Who gives a shit? When you're young, you're free. It weren't pesto on sourdough bread, it was a couple of eggs on toast. Look, it's all coming out in me now, the Bermondsey, innit? <laughs> Stop laughing behind the camera. 